एटीन संडे इन ऑर्डिनरी टाइम प्रिजन मिनिस्ट्री संडे द लॉर्ड रेन डाउन माना फ्रॉम हेवन फॉर द सन्स ऑफ इजराइल बिकॉज दे कंप्लेन्ड सेंट पॉल एक्सप्लेन्स दैट स्पिरिचुअल नरिशमेंट इज द ओनली वे टू अटेन ट्रू सल्वेशन द कैथलिक चर्च डिवोट्स दिस डे टू द प्रिजन मिनिस्ट्री Jesus has said that he came to set prisoners free. Today we turn our thoughts to those who have been imprisoned. Some of them for no fault of their own and who have to suffer untold miseries. We also submit ourselves to the Lord for we too are in a sense prisoners of our own needs desires and unhealthy aspirations during this eucharistic celebration let us pray for the grace that all people may find true freedom by their faith in god who releases us from all kinds of earthly bondage This mass is offered in thanksgiving in honor of Jesus and uh, Mother Mary in honor of ho- the holy family on the occasion of her birthday for the recovery from illness by Lidwin de Mello and on the occasion of the birthday of John Joseph there's also a thanksgiving mass to St Ignatius of Loyola a zonal feast mass of community number 13 during this mass we should also pray for the following persons Paul Joseph, Felix and Clara Lobo, Annie Swamy, Lily Cecilia Cecian, Tony Kathleen Orman, Anthony Fasco Fernandez, Shashikant Gaonkar, Vishwanath Bhandarkar, Father Simplicius Khes, Father John Lobo, Father Felix Ribello, Frederick Peter Pereira, Maria Silvidais Celine Menacheri Augusta and Anthony John Pereira Richard Rodriguez S Joseph and family Joseph Miranda Joachim de Mello deceased members of Rodriguez and Pinto families the Miranda family and the D'Souza family This is also Mans Mind Mass of uh, Teresa Almeida and the first death anniversary of uh, Juliana Denise and Nitin H Dabi In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit Welcome to the celebration where Jesus invites us to go beyond situations no matter how pressing no matter how oppressive no matter what we are called to rise and go beyond these limiting conditions
let us acknowledge our limitations where we tend to give in to pressing times as we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel. Say to them, 
at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread then you shall know that i am the lord your god in the evening quail came up and covered the camp and in the morning dew lay around the camp and when the dew had gone up there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake like thing fine as frost on the ground when the people of israel saw it they said to one another what is it for they did not know what it was and moses said to them it is the bread the lord has given you to eat the word of the lord thanks be our response will be the lord gave them bread from heaven we'll repeat the lord gave them bread from heaven the things we have heard and understood the things our fathers have told us but will tell them to the next generation the glories of the lord and his might our response the lord gave them bread from heaven yet he commanded the clouds above and opened the gates of heaven he rained down manna to eat and gave them bread from heaven our response the lord gave them bread from heaven man ate the bread of angels he sent them abundance of food so he brought them to his holy land to the mountain his right hand had won our response the lord gave them bread from heaven a reading from the letter of saint paul to the ephesians brethren this i say and testify in the lord that you must no longer walk as the gentiles do in the futility of their minds but that is not the way you learn christ assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in jesus to put off your old self which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of god in true righteousness and holiness the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god. god we'll stand up for the gospel hallelujah hallelujah man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god hallelujah The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, "Rabbi, when did you come here?" Jesus answered them, "Truly, Truly I say to you you are seeking me not because you saw signs but because you ate your fill of the loaves do not work for the food that perishes but for the food that endures to eternal life which the son of man will give to you for on him god the father has set his seal then they said to him what must we do to be doing the works of god jesus answered them this is the work of god that you believe in him whom he has sent so they said to him then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you 
What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to him, Truly, truly I say, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Have you ever seen a butterfly go back into its cocoon? Or have you witnessed a baby return to the womb? Surely not. Not possible. Natural processes will not permit it. Natural processes urge, encourage things to move forward, to improve. To grow, and so these examples, what I place before you, before you, you'll find them absurd. And yet, is it not absurd when in the first reading we see how the Hebrews delivered from Egypt, they were in slavery, they were delivered by the powerful hand of God, and now they see them in the they see themselves in the wilderness. And there they see around, there is no shops here, no kiraya ka dukan, nothing that we can buy. What will happen to us? And they want to go back. They want to go back to slavery. They want to go back to that half a morsel that they would eat in bondage. Isn't this an absurd kind of thinking? But that is what they were looking at. That is what they wanted to choose. It is when we, it is we see, we see obstacles when we lose sight of the goal. They seem to have forgotten the purpose of leaving Egypt. They lost sight or they were beginning to lose sight of the purpose of the deliverance, their liberation. That here they are being called by God to make good their future, to realize their future, to create their own future, albeit with God's guidance and inspiration. They wanted to go back. But it was not to be so. Moses was a visionary. He was kind of clear. This is the way forward. He never knew himself how things would unfold, but he knew that going back into the cocoon, into a comfort level, is not um, the way out, is not what God wants of them. And he led them on towards the promised land. But this happened in the Old Testament. You may wonder, we would never do such a thing. Don't think so. The gospel text is similar in nature. People had eaten their fill. They were fed with loaves and fish. And they go searching for Jesus. Now where has this person disappeared? And having found, found him, they possibly wanted now breakfast. But Jesus saw through their game. Jesus called their game and told them, you come to me because you were fed to the full? I want you to go beyond. I don't want you to, to restrict your impression or your image of me to a, just a provider. They must have been thinking, okay, here is a person. He heals us from our illnesses. He feeds us our daily bread. We have a walking, talking, kiraya ka dukan and a doctor. 
We don't have to pay for it. But Jesus would not stop them at that. Jesus did not want them to stop at that. He says, I am the bread of life. I am different. I have something greater for you in store. And that's what the second reading reminds us. Don't go back to your old ways. Be creative in your thinking because in Christ you are a new creation. Going back to your old ways is not an option. We need to be creative and move forward. No matter how pressing, no matter how challenging the times are. And today when we celebrate prison ministry as well, what could be worse? What could be more tough? What could be more difficult than languishing in a jail with possibly no hope? But once we give up on hope, everything's lost. Even in those pressing situations, we are called to rise above those times. And we who are not in prison, so to say, are called to think of how we can respond to those languishing in those situations. We are in the context of Olympics also. What does Olympics invite us to? Are, they, are those just athletes who are participating? No. The Olympics invite us to move higher, faster and stronger. And that is what uh, Jesus today places before us. He says our faith invites us to move ahead, to take on challenges, to improve upon times, both for oneself and for the community and society at large. Amen. Together we profess our faith. All together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus is the bread of life. If we believe in him, we shall have eternal life. With confidence, we now place our petitions before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For the Universal Church, Lord, that your anointed ministers, Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and all consecrated people might be instruments of your liberating love. May they assist our brethren who are imprisoned in their journey of reintegration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For representatives of our government, Lord, you have chosen them to serve our country. During this pandemic, give them the grace to respond to the needs of our country with timely efforts of relief and restoration. Through your spirit of wisdom and compassion, guide them to recreate the life of people within the walls of the prison and beyond as well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters imprisoned, especially those wrongly accused. Lord, 
you who were innocent and falsely accused understand their plight they face physical mental and emotional persecution we ask for your saving grace that the prison authorities and staff may be kind gentle and understanding towards them let us pray to the lord lord graciously hear our prayer for the inmates who have died loving lord in a special way we thank you for the life of father stan swami may we learn to live our lives like father stan fearlessly and courageously we also pray for the prison inmates who have passed away during the pandemic may they enjoy eternal rest and reward let us pray to the lord lord graciously hear our prayer for all volunteers engaged in prison ministry of mumbai lord you have called each one by name and they have answered your call to reach out to the least the lost and the lonely in prison empower them in all their endeavors to be successful in the reintegration of prisoners let us pray to the lord lord graciously hear our prayer we'll pause now and pray for our personal needs and the needs of community and the needs of the prison ministry let us pray to the lord lord graciously hear our prayer loving lord we thank you for listening to our prayers stretch forth your comforting hands and touch all our brethren in prison with the power of your spirit take us and use us for the reintegration of the inmates who are imprisoned we make this prayer to christ our lord Dear friends <clears throat> that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the almighty father that the lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his creation let us pray graciously sanctify these gifts o lord we pray and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice make of us an eternal offering to you to christ our lord amen lord is with you Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, He humbled Himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, 
He freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world For by your cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and bread of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious and all our parishioners. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not in our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus is with you always. And with your spirit. Let us then share his peace. Peace with you. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. He reminds us, invites us to rise beyond our situation. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter on my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be free. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. 18th Sunday of the Year, Notices for the Week Prison Ministry Sunday is celebrated today. Today there will be an online PPC meeting at 10.30 a.m an SCC coordinators meeting at 7 p.m. The Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord is on Friday, 6th August. Next Sunday, 8th August, we celebrate Vianney Sunday. Those parishioners who have subscribed for the examiner issues may collect their June and July copies from the parish office during working hours. End of the notices. Thank you. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ to rise above time. has chosen us to carry on his life over every land and sea from the north and from the south and from the east and west he has called us all